Hey, welcome back to your Kirby Data Science channel. This, I guess, this is uh, Google Ad Data Analytics uh, Capstone uh, Video 1. I'm actually responding to a couple of posts on, in one of the forums and on the Google Analytics uh, forum on Facebook. The idea was uh, how to import or how to download and import the, uh, the bike trip files. Well, the bike trip files are fairly large, okay? There's about 5 million rows, and, and uh, all, you know, the, the, the 12 instructions are you have to download uh, the previous 12 months, okay? So the first thing we have to go and find out when the, where the data is. Download, case study one. This is it, the cyclist the cyclistic uh, ride bike share, okay? So if you come down here, here, prepare. You use a cyclistic historic trip data and you identify trends. Download the previous 12 months data. So you click on this here, opens up. So you go, you go, you're going to download the, the, uh, the uh, each individual thing. So all you got to do is right click, Save link as. Now, I know there's a way to go out and download these files automatically, either either from the command line using something like curl maybe, or inside a, or inside of our studio and R itself. But at this point, you know, sometimes all you want to do is get the data downloaded and get analyzing. You know, and again, if this is if this since this is just a project, and it's not going to be updated next week. It's just as easy to manually download the 12 files, okay? So as you can see, we download the 12 files. Okay, and this archive here you can see where I download all twelve of the files. I then I did, I, did, I then just went through one by one and unzipped them and put them in a file called directory. Okay. Now if you come over here, take a look at R. You know, I, I, again, I, this, this is this, like I say. Sometimes you just want to get the data downloaded. And start doing you and start and start working on it. You know, like I say, if, if this was going to be a repeat report weekly, you'd want to look for something different to automatically download the latest files. Uh, we're using Tidyverse Janitor to do try to do a little data cleaning, and Lubridate to, to format the uh, the dates the two date fields. Okay, so all I'm doing, I'm just downloading. Uh, th well, this here I like because it it cleans out all the it cleans out the environment. And every, every time you run a script, it's a good thing to clean out the environment, okay? And this next one just, just lists just list the files in the, uh, in the data directory. Yeah, you can see there's 12 in 12 months, okay? Then that just came down, did a copy and paste, and, you know, and, and created 12 data frames, okay? Just using a plain old CSV read. You could, of course, use underscore CSV, but we, I'm using this right here. Then what do I do? I create a single data frame called bike rides. We're using the R bind, the, the row bind. So it means it's going to add, you start here, then it's going to add the, the D2 data frame onto the end of the, of the, of the, of the uh, bike rides. And it keeps adding them on. So we're, we're just doing a row bind on the 12 columns. Here I'm using Janitor to check for empty rows and empty uh, columns. Uh, as you'll see, there isn't any here. So now let's come down here and do that. Oops, I didn't run my script, did I? Now, this, like I say, this is a total of 5 million records. So, uh, depending on your system, you may have to be a little patient because it, it, it takes a couple minutes for, for, for this to actually uh, com to create the new data frame for me. One other note, I haven't, I haven't actually read the worksheet for the project, so I'm just kind of trying to, trying to get into the point where you got ready to do something, okay? 
So it's good to come down here now. Let's just do a dim. No, that's not where it goes. Is it? Let's come down here. Just so we can get the size of the thing. So we can get the size of the data structure. And I haven't created a data frame yet. Now, as you see, it, this is going to take a couple of, you know, a couple of minutes probably to finally. Uh, th this this is this is my, my system as an as a as a HP i5 system as an i5 processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you saw it, it built this data frame pretty quickly. Okay, what you can see, we have 3.48 million rows with 13 variables. Okay, now we're going to check for blank rows. Or blank uh, blank columns. You know what? Let's just do another dim down here. That way we'll be able to see if there's any changes and if, if there's any changes, and there's not. So the next thing I did is okay. If you come over here now, you can see the start at which is a day, a day time step and an end at, but you can see. These two columns are currently, okay, are currently uh, character strings. So we're going to use the lubricate function to convert these to timestamps. And now you can see they're, they're a timestamp. Now, interesting enough, if you look down here, start station is a character. End station ID is a character. That's probably not right. We may want to change those to in a longitude, latitude, in latitude, member casual, in okay. Now let's come over here. And we're, going to, we're just going to try to pull out the timestamps. Unfortunately, I can't remember if this actually works or not. You see, again, this is taking a little bit because because it takes a, it takes a, it takes a few minutes to go through all the five million rows and change it and change that data. Okay, so let's get rid of this. But these are okay. So what, what we're interested in now is the hours. Start hour, end hour. Okay. Some start in at the same time, which means it's, it means it's just it's just minutes. Okay. What about start date? Now we're just gonna pull out the date. Okay. So now we could do things. We, we, we could do a count by date and plot the number of rides per date. For instance, very simply, we could do the count by hours. We can do a count by hours and start time and, and start hour and, and, and do stuff that way now. Let's just see if, let's just see if we can do a quick plot. Let's see if we can do a quick plot now. Well, this isn't going to work, is it? We're going to do a, we're going to say,
Let's see if we can do a plot of start hour. Okay, let's just see how this looks. Okay, so here's the hours. Okay, sort and they're sorted by value of n. n is the count. So over a 12-month period, this would be the number of of rides they they, they had uh, for, for for five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Let's see if we can do a quick plot of this now. X equals, now the way this is supposed to work, Y is supposed to be N, okay? And so now we have a count of the number of rides by hour, okay? Let's just do so. Let's just, let's just move this down to the other line. Now, you, you could extend this any way you want to. All right. Any way you want to. Uh, you can do it. You can do it by by date and start out. Then do it and then do a time series plot over over time. OK. Let's just do one thing here. Let's just add one more library. Now, this library wasn't mentioned, but I think you'll immediately see why it's so useful for you. You see this, you see this uh, scientific exp exponential notation? Well, I'm not particularly good at that, but what the scales package does it gives us the ability to fork these 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 here are called labels. Okay, these here are called labels. Okay. The 0, 5, 10 are called labels. And we use the scales package to format the X and Y labels, okay? Hmm. Now Continuous, because it's a continuous variable. Let's see how this looks now. So, scales. This should all look familiar to you so far, okay? Hmm. 
Not quite sure. That that shouldn't be a simple thing here. No oh, labels. Labels, okay. Now let's try. You can see what we have right now. Then we can add some labels. Now we want to label the white axis. Okay. Let's try it one more time. So obviously the you see notice what's interesting this 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 steady increase in rides between well from five all the way up to like three p.m. then it begins to fall off. Of course that's what we'd expect, right? We would expect the um, we would expect the rise to increase leading up to rush hour. Okay. Okay, and there you have it. A quick data input, a little data cleaning, and a quick plot to show you, just, just to get you up and running now. Of course, as always, you can always direct message me on Facebook if you need help. Thanks so much for your time. We'll catch you later on.